This is Sunday, Mother's Day. Joe wanted to take a drive back to the home place and visit his sister today. So we are... It's been seven years. Oh, it's not been seven years since you've been over there. It's since your mother passed, I bet, though. No, we've been over there one or two times since your mother passed. I don't think so. So we stopped outside of Gate City to the Hobnob Drive-In. And they are very busy today inside. No seating available. So we placed our order and they're going to bring it out to the car. And I'm starting to get really hungry, aren't you? Yeah. What did you order? Hamburger. What else? Fries. Okay. And I ordered a cheeseburger and onion rings. And I flavored a bottle of water with some lemon drops before we left. So we've got that to drink. So I'll show you the food when it gets here. Show me the color of it. We just want to wish everybody out there a very happy Mother's Day. It's a beautiful day here. And we're just sitting here facing this bank. It's full of copperheads. Joe says it's full of copperheads. Okay, getting out of the car. There's the hobnob here on the back side. Very popular place and the food is so good and they've got the best soft serve ice cream but we won't be getting that and driving if it's not too late when we start back home we may stop here and get an ice cream a lot of people waiting in their cars to get their orders and it's packed full inside our food came, and Joe's hamburger was cold, so I had to walk it back in there and have them warm it up for him. We got the fries and onion rings, and my cheeseburger and onion rings. We found a little shady spot here, so we're just eating in the car, and then we'll be on the road again. My sunglasses just fell. lived in it for a little while but they are now over in Tennessee and there's her garage and behind there is 
Joe's niece's house, which you can't really see it too good right now. Here's the big fishing pond. And Joe's sister is up here on the hill. Here, come from Granny Horn. Yeah, Granny Horn. <laughs> we came out of Bland County. Bland well, County. Bland but County. now, if it's not comfortable, why get over in that softer one? That's, that's pretty comfortable to me. Because he has shown us something that he killed where he goes hunting <laughs> and he's got it stored in a safe place. And do you know what that is? <laughs> Ooh, it makes me chills go up my spine just yeah, 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 yeah. Oh wow, how did you kill it, Cosy? Pistol. Uh, pistol. With a pistol. Yeah. Rat shot in it. Well and Griff said that you would shoot bumblebees. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you were a sharp shooter. <laughs> What would you do if you came up on that rattlesnake, Joe? I'd be moving to a new location. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that scares any snake scares daylights out of me. I always did. It does me too. I mean, any any, any kind. Of, obviously, this poisonous one. Get behind me, Satan! Don't you dare! I'm going to get y'all's picture together. Oh, man. Learn the words. For what he did in this. Well. We appreciate you coming up there. Thanks. It's going to be wild. Right, it's good seeing you. Good seeing you. Griff, come over and see us. All right. I love Linda's pantry door. And Scott, her son, made this. Very rustic. And look at the door handle pull. Just a rope. Love it. Linda's always got her house decorated so pretty. This was granddad's uh, thing that he had at the store that he scooped out the feed at, at Tacoma. Joe's yelling for yeah. you there. <laughs> well, look at that, that was scoop. Mama's churn dash. Right there. Yeah. And this was the knife that he cut everybody's baloney and everything Aww, with. Oh, at the store. <laughs> yeah. That's an old knife. Yeah. yeah. Just a minute. <laughs> and I hear Cindy's little dog <laughs> that Linda's babysitting, little Molly. Let's go check on her. Molly, I hear you. Nobody paying any attention to you. Is nobody paying any attention to you? Huh? Are they? Are they? Got hanging up. Yeah, yeah. Well, I bet you don't have any carpenter bees around, do you? Huh? I think it pretty well takes care of them. Keep them right on. Yeah. Look at this big hornet's nest. My goodness, that's a monster. Yeah, it would. It would. How, how did you get that down and preserve it? It was built in a fence. 
and I cut the wire. You see the one one wire come across the top and then two coming down the side? Yeah. That's how I got it out. I just well, cut how did the you wall. get the bees out of it? I waited till they left. <laughs> then got Oh. It. Yeah. Birds is tore a hole right here. Did you have to spray anything up in there? Or? Yeah, I sprayed glue on it to try to keep them out of it. Yeah. And we had top. one last year that had... It wasn't that big, but almost that big, up in a pine tree way yeah, up tall. Yeah, yeah. And one of our neighbors is a beekeeper, and he came over with his bee suit on and sprayed it and then had to take a big um, pole saw and yeah. cut the limb that it was on, and it hit the ground. <laughs> and the bees started flying everywhere. <laughs> we all took <laughs> a run for cover. But... Um, it's neat that you preserved that, though. Yeah, yeah. Now, we make a fake uh, hornet's nest out of a brown paper bag and just yeah. stuff it full of those shopping bags and right. crinkle it yeah. up and hang it, and it, it helps keep the carpenter bees away, yeah, too. Yeah, yeah. We don't hardly have, them, have any trouble out of them. Good job. I love the pantry door you made. Her. Did you make these mushrooms too? No, no, no. Those are cute. The big frog. <laughs> We're going to see the mule. What's the mule's name? Reuben. Reuben? Yeah. That's what the old man said he called him. How long have you had Reuben? I had him about four years. That's a pretty long time. We I hear the hot wire on the front fence. It's going. Yeah. Now Griff got rid of his chickens, didn't he? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, he got rid of his chickens. Hey, Reuben. Hey, Reuben. He's pretty. Come on up here. Come on up here. Do you miss having horses? Yeah, Riding some, them on the some. trails? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Griff, he rides that mule, but I ain't never rode him. Griff will ride anything, won't he? Yeah, yeah, you try anything. I just leave the barn door open. That thing goes and comes. Yeah. And then he eats when he wants to. Well, he's got it made. Yeah. Come on up here. Get your picture made. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Come on. So you got an apple or a carrot? No, not close, I ain't. <laughs> well, look who's coming up the driveway. I hadn't seen you in ages. Yeah, that's, that, that's about 16 years old. Yeah, now, what was its name? Snickers? Snickers, yeah. Here comes Snickers. Connor named you. Named yeah, you that. I can see your little face. You're getting older. Yeah, getting whiter all the time. Hello, Snickers. Now, this one... Has he eaten any more holiday hams? Have you stolen any more hams off the table? Remember that Christmas, or was it Thanksgiving, B had baked a ham and set it outside on the table yeah. to cool, and Snickers got it. And they had to take, he ate the whole thing. <laughs> and they had to take him to the vet. Well. Huh. Do you remember that? Huh? Do you remember that? Come on up here, Ruth. Come on. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. There you are. Here you come. You're beautiful. You're a handsome dude. Yes, you are. Come on up here. You're a handsome dude. Come on. Come on. Come on up here. Come on up here. Come on. He's just gentle as they come. Yeah. 
he looks like he is. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Hey, buddy. Keep shoes on him about all the time. Do you? Yeah. Because you never know when Griff's when going to ride. That's true. And how old is he? Uh, I think he's about nine or ten. Ten years old? Yeah. He's a pretty one. Well, I've worked on this the last two days under the cherry tree, getting all the sod out. And I've got all the plants planted now around it that I've got. And I had three hibiscus from last year still in their pots. There's one. I just went ahead and planted those under here too. Got lilies of different varieties, some hostas, dianthus, of course, the hibiscus. Put the old rocking chair and flower pot out here. And there we have it. I've also planted, there's a stick I just picked up, throw it under there. It's not where I wanted it. <laughs> I also planted um, some iris bulbs and tulip bulbs. I planted uh, di another bulb of a different variety of an iris, not iris, but um, lily, some columbine, and some zinnia seeds in here. So we'll see if any of that comes up. The only thing I'm lacking is the mulch and some type of edge around it. <coughs> the weather is calling for thunderstorms this evening, and it's in a neighboring town right now working its way toward us so I'm glad I got all this done I'm gonna let it rain on all of this good before I put the um, pine needles on for mulch can you see the dark cloud the dark sky and it's a lot of rain clouds in the area so I'm hoping for the rain this time <laughs> to rain in all the plants that we've planted today. We also planted the garden. I'll show it to you. Now this is all the garden I'm gonna have this year, really scaling back. But I did do one row of potatoes right here, down this row. And I've done one row of onions. I'm gonna wait a while and put another row down through here of onions. These are tomatoes, Parks Whoppers, um, pineapple tomato, pink German tomato and beef steak and over here are the peppers they're hot banana jalapeno and big Bertha bell peppers and then I just did three mounds and planted some watermelon seed in that 
So I'm going to call it a day. <laughs> my back is feeling a lot better, but now my right knee feels like it's about to go out on me. So I'm going to go in and put some ice on it and maybe a knee brace because I don't want any trouble with the knee. If any of you know the name of this plant, it grows wild on the side of the roads. And especially during the holidays, I like to find it and clip it and use it in outdoor um, arrangements with pine and different things. And it adds a pop of red color. I don't know if you can really see it here or not, but it against that holly tree. So I clipped this one. I didn't use any this year, but I found some down the road, but it was growing way up high, but I was able to clip this one branch off. And I put some seed in dirt and I'm going to see if it'll sprout and maybe find a place to grow it around here. Hey y'all, and welcome to the kitchen. Um, I'm gonna make a cheesecake. Never made one before, but I picked another quarter of strawberries from the garden and um, put my apron on here. Um, decided to go ahead and make a cheesecake with a strawberry glaze on it, strawberry topping. So um, it's supposed to rain this afternoon. But this morning it's still kind of cool. The grass is still wet. And we can't get out and do any work. I meant to make this yesterday, but by the time Joe and I finished all the yard work, I was just too tired to do anything. So I'm making it this morning. And hopefully the rain will hold off where we can get out and do some weed eating and finish up the yard work this afternoon. But anyway, first of all, I'm going to make the topping and I'm going to show you how I'm making it. As I go along now I'm using two different recipes um, there's some things about one recipe I think I would like versus the other so I'm just kind of combining the two <laughs> together and we'll see how it turns out now for the crust I'll set my pan aside for a minute I have crushed up 15 graham crackers and I'm using the Nabisco graham crackers original grams now, I just crush these up by hand inside the sleeve, and so you'll see there's still some little chunky pieces in here, but I think I would like that. I like the texture of that more than just putting them in a food processor and um, mixing them up that way because that kind of grounds it to powder. But I think I like the texture of the crunchy ones in here. To this, I'm going to add... <coughs> Four tablespoons of brown sugar and one tablespoon of granulated sugar. So in that goes. I'm going to use my hands and just crumble that up. And you use just a pinch of salt or a dash of salt like I did. And then you pour in 10 tablespoons of melted butter. I'm gonna get a little spatula to get all that out. Okay. And just mix all of this together. And we're going to press this into our Gray's springform pan, 9 inch springform pan. And I'm just going to spray it with a cooking spray. I'm going to make sure all these cracker things are evenly um, buttered up. <laughs> Let's grease the pan. The bottom and the sides. Make sure I got everything before I do that. 
15 gram crackers, brown sugar, granulated sugar, uh, butter, and salt. Yeah, got it all in here. So let's press this into the pan. You can use your hands if you want to. One technique showed using a flat bottomed measuring cup. You could probably use a glass if you wanted to. Anything with a flat bottom on it. So I'm going to get my measuring cup out. Flat bottom measuring cup. Yeah, that does a good job. And let some press up on the sides. Maybe one recipe said to do that. The other one just said press it flat. And I think I'm just going to press it flat all the way around. I think that's pretty well pressed down. Now, we need to preheat the oven, and I forgot to do that. I forgot to preheat the oven. <laughs> so you preheat the oven at 350 degrees, and we're going to bake this crust for 10 to 12 minutes, something like that. So we'll be back. Time to check our crust. I think that looks nice and golden brown, so we'll let that cool while we make the cheesecake. So the ingredients for the cheesecake is four um, eight ounce packages of sour cream, one can of sweetened condensed milk, one fourth cup of granulated sugar, <clears throat> one half cup of sour cream, two teaspoons of vanilla, the zest and juice of half of a lemon, one fourth cup of all purpose flour and four eggs at room temperature and a pinch of salt. So, I noticed I have three eggs. I need one more egg. Those are at room temperature, but this one will not be. I don't think it will hurt. Now the other recipe I was looking at called for three eggs, so that's why I had three eggs out there. And um, it also did not call for the condensed milk, the Eagle brand milk. But I think that will help it to be a lot creamier instead of, of a texture than just adding sour cream. So that's why I'm adding this. So let's keep going. So the first thing I'm going to do is to the four packages of sour cream, I'm going to add the condensed milk. Use the stand mixer and just cream this together. cream together and I'm going to add the one fourth cup of granulated sugar and a half a cup of sour cream and the vanilla two teaspoons this together. Alright, next step is I'm going to add the zest and juice of half of a lemon. Got that on the beaters. A 
pinch of salt and one quarter cup of all-purpose flour. It's time for the four eggs. And one thing um, I read in making cheesecake, when you're using a stand mixer, not to go over medium speed because you don't want to put air bubbles in with your cheesecake. Try to keep the air bubbles out. So I do low to medium when I'm mixing that together. So in goes the four eggs. And we'll blend this. Okay, I have all of this cream together now. And it's ready to go into the spring form pan. Just going to give it a good stir here with, with the spatula. Make sure everything's all stirred up good. Alright, here it goes. One recipe, mm, that's going to be some good cheesecake. Instead of putting this in a pan filled with water around it, said to put a bowl of water in the oven next to it. So that's what I'm going to do, and I'm putting it in this rimmed uh, baking pan. I've got the oven heated at 325, and we'll check it at an hour. While the cake is baking, I'm going to go ahead and make the strawberry um, sauce that will go on top. So this is the strawberries that I picked two days ago out of the strawberry patch. And I've got about a quarter cup of water here in the bottom. I washed these strawberries in some water with vinegar in it. Okay, I didn't slice them. They're, they were kind of small. I just left them whole. And I'm going to put a half a cup of um, sugar. And I'm turning the heat on um, a low medium. A half a cup of sugar. I'm going to go a scant half a cup. Just so they're not too sweet. And the other half of the lemon zest and lemon juice. Now I'm going to let these slowly cook. And once it comes to a boil, I'll take a masher and mash those strawberries and add a teaspoon of vanilla. And if I need to thicken it, I'll add some cornstarch. Okay, the strawberry sauce is starting to bubble now, and I did add some cornstarch to thicken it up some. You really didn't need to add the water, but I wanted the water because I wanted to make sure that I had plenty of the juice to drizzle over the cheesecake. So I'm going to remove it from the heat, turn off the eye, and add a teaspoon of vanilla. And stir that. So I went ahead and added the remaining sugar to make a complete half cup because after tasting the strawberries they were still a little tart. So that's a full half cup of sugar that went in there and I've divided them into these um, two small white cups and once they cool I'll refrigerate those. Now the uh, cheesecake is still in the oven. It lacks about eight more minutes and um, then I will turn the oven off and leave the cheesecake in there with the door closed for another hour. Okay, I just took the cheesecake out of the oven. It baked for an hour at 325. Then I turned the oven off, kept the oven door closed, and let it sit in for another 45 minutes. Then I cracked the oven door just a little bit and continued to let it sit in there for another 15 minutes. And it looks delicious. I hope it doesn't fall. But um, I'll let it sit here till it gets to room temperature. And then I will put it in the refrigerator for overnight. All right. It's time to have a piece of cheesecake. Really? 
I made it this morning and it's been in the refrigerator for about eight hours. So I think it's ready um, to try. So now's the time for truth or consequences. We're gonna take this spring form off and hope and pray it doesn't stick. This is the first time I have ever made a cheesecake. I'm gonna to try to find um, those butter knives to run around the edge. I'm sorry, did I hit your toe? Yep. This one's a good one. I'm gonna run a knife just around the edge to loosen it up some. Mm. I feel it going through that graham cracker crust. This looks, y'all. Yes, it is. It's lovely. Now I'm going to take it off of this plate if I can and slide it over on the cake plate. Be careful with that blade. Mm -hmm. Y'all, some of y'all may comment that I'm not using the right knife, but I like this knife. I use it for a lot of different things. There it goes. All right. Okay. Now here comes the truth part. You get a plate. have a tiny piece because it's getting late tonight, isn't it? Yeah. Tiny sliver. Crust. Put some strawberry glaze on it. Get your fork. And you taste it and tell us what you think about it. Approval stamp. You, you give it your stamp of approval. Okay. Right. Yeah. Mm, for it. Okay. There's my piece. I got some of the crust and the strawberry glaze. It's good. It's not as good as the one that Gary makes, is it? We've got friends, Rita and Gary. Gary's a wonderful cook, and he makes the most delicious cheesecakes. It's pretty good, though, I have to say. It's good. 
I'll have to ask Carrie if he puts condensed milk in with his cheesecake or just sour cream. I'll be interested to know. But I was always intimidated about making a cheesecake because you have to put it in that water in a pan around the cake as it cooks and I thought that just sounds like a big mess to me. <laughs> But this technique turned out really good where you just put a cup of water next to the cake. Nope, don't no, dump no, it. No, don't dump it. It's going to show the texture after we cut it here. It, the lighting's not that good. But can you see? It's yep. really creamy and smooth. So we give this a thumbs up. We're going to end the video with this. And we hope y'all have had a blessed week and have a good week coming up. And we'll catch you on the next one. Okay? God bless y'all and keep walking in the light. Thank you.